Hi, everyone. This is Dariva Mystic. Welcome to One Bad Tarot Reader, Podcast 16. Podcast says in French. Thank you to those who like to tune in and listen to this podcast. I really appreciate it. The topic for today's podcast is this happened. (laughs) This actually happened. So for those who know, who've been following my channel for quite some time, I've often talked about losing my mom at a very young age. For those who are listening that don't know that, I have suffered from mother loss early on in my life, which essentially shaped who I am today. So throughout my life, my mother has shown up for me in my life. And it's quite amazing. And maybe one day I'll write a book about my experiences, but because we've gone through Halloween which is when the veil is thinnest between this physical world, the earthly plane, and the spiritual plane or the spirit world. Those who honor and celebrate their ancestors on Day of the Dead, Dia de los Mortes, I'm not Mexican, but many people do celebrate their heritage and their ancestors on those days. And many people also have or create an ancestor altar with pictures of their loved ones who are deceased, etc., and honor them. This happened almost a week ago, not even. So today is Tuesday, November 9th. This occurred on Friday, November 5th. So there have been many experiences I've had with contact from the spirit world when it comes to my mother over the years. And I don't necessarily dream about my mom. Very rarely do I have dreams. She doesn't come into my dreams. There's probably two dreams that I can remember over the last, uh, well, over the last 20 years that I can recall of her coming into my dreams. So I don't necessarily dream about her very much. Uh, I rather feel that she's with me all the time. And so, and I'll get you some examples of the experiences I've had with my mom over the years. So anyway, last Friday, (laughs) I was talking to my daughter about my mom and the experience that I had Uh, when I was around 23 years old and I have a video about it, about the entity that I had an experience with when I was 23 in the video, I'll link it below. It's called the Grim Reaper of 1913. And I was 23 at the time. Well, my mother passed away when she was 23. So I'm talking about this experience and my daughter has heard it before, but I don't like to talk about it. And we're talking about it and talking about my mom and the fact that I was the same age and that's the same age she was when she passed away and et cetera, et cetera. And so my mother's name is not very common. It's not a very common name. Uh, that you hear, and I'm going to keep my mom's name private, but it's not a very common name. And so, you know how you get text alerts or messages from social media? 
like so-and-so commented on a post or so-and-so replied to your comment. And many times if you have it on your phone, uh, especially like Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, or you know, you can change your settings and receive updates on comments. And I had commented on a post earlier that day. And as I was getting ready to leave the house, Last Friday, around four o'clock, my phone went off and I looked at what popped up and it said my mother's name commented on a post and the wind, the wind went out of my body. <laughs> I got winded and I went, oh, and my daughter said, what? And I showed her, I said, look, look at that. And she goes, oh my God, we were just talking about her. And I said, I know. So I went to the person's page that has the same name as her. And there wasn't much on the person's page at all. In fact, there was no profile pic. There wasn't a friends list. There was nothing. But this person was a part of the conversation on social media and they commented on something that I had written. And so I replied to their comment and said, oh my God, you have the same name as my mother and we were just talking about her today. So I'm taking this as a sign that she heard us, she heard me. And so I screenshotted the person's name and the reply. And it was one of those weird moments where it's too coincidental because she doesn't have a common name like Lisa, Jennifer, you know, she just doesn't have a common name. And so it was a testament to me that she she's listening or she's around and she hears me and she sees what's going on. And, you know, we sometimes kind of feel, if you've ever felt like this, if you've had a loved one who you're very close to, that they're gone from this physical world and you kind of feel like they're not around or you don't feel their presence or you wonder if they um, are even capable of getting into contact with them because sometimes the silence is deafening or it's so quiet that you don't feel their presence anymore or you're not seeing signs of their presence or you don't you question or wonder if they're just completely gone gone and the answer to that is no my mother's been gone from this physical plane for 45 years and I have and still have contact with her and it's amazing to me because I really was not aware of this until I was in my early 20s that I had and kept and retained this bond with her for many, many years, she was still a part of my life and still is. And so I wanted to share that with you because it was so amazing to me and I couldn't believe it. And it was one of those moments where I was like, are you freaking kidding me? And I thanked her for that. It made me happy. It made me just realize, oh my God, she's, she's still around. So if you ever feel like your loved one or family member or friend or whomever has died and they've passed on and you don't feel them anymore, they're still around. They're still around. And I think they like to be talked about. I think they like to be honored and they like to be remembered.
And so my connection with her, as I've gotten older, I've witnessed some amazing, amazing uh, moments where it just solidifies the fact that the connection is never lost. And I know that she will be the first one to greet me one day when I transition and pass to the other side. I just know that for a fact, that my mother is going to be the first one that is going to greet me in heaven. I really believe that. And so here's an example. About, I guess it was 14 years ago. It might have been 15 years ago. I don't know if my daughter was born yet. I may have been pregnant. I can't recall. But anyway, I was living by myself. I was living on my own. And it was around my birthday. And I had thought this thought to myself. I didn't even speak it aloud. I wasn't even talking to anybody about it. And I just thought to myself, to myself, and it was around my birthday, if my mom ever remembers that it's my birthday in heaven. And it wasn't a feel sorry for me moment. It was just like, I wonder if mom still remembers my birthday. And about two weeks later, or it may have been a week later, but at some point I had a conversation with my dad. And my dad said, oh, by the way, we got a phone call from one of your mom's good friends who she ran around with and they were real close. And he described this person to me that I had never met and maybe had heard of maybe once in my entire life that this this friend of my mother's had tracked me down and had contacted my father and left a message and tracked me down and left her phone number for me to contact her and that she explained to my dad I know you haven't heard from me in 30 years but I had the most astounding dream the other night that Brooke's mom came to me in a dream to tell me to tell her happy birthday and that she loves her and she misses her. And I about dropped the phone and screamed and I said, oh my God, I said, dad, I was just thinking around my birthday, if mom still remembers my birthday. And dad says, well, this is quite amazing because I have not heard from or seen this woman that was your mom's friend from years ago since your mom's funeral. And I was like, holy moly. And he gave me her phone number and I couldn't believe it. And it was crazy. And it took me a long time to phone this woman back because I just was kind of like, I don't know if I want to, I don't know, it was weird. It's like I had never met a friend of my mother's. I didn't know if I wanted to contact this woman. And so eventually I did contact her. And she told me flat out what she, uh, it was very vivid that she came to her in a dream and wanted her to reach out to me to let me know that she knows it's my birthday and she said happy birthday to me and that she loves me, etc. And then my daughter was maybe about a year old. So this must have happened before my daughter was born. So I eventually met this uh, woman who was a friend of my mother's about a year later. That's how long it took me to contact her. I just felt weird for some reason. I just didn't, I don't know. Anyway, so, and I met up with her, went to visit her, met her, uh, brought my daughter along. And, you know, she was telling me stories about my mom and her as teenagers and being friends and growing up together and all this stuff. And it was just surreal. It was surreal. And that was about 14, 
13, 14 years ago. I haven't seen her since, uh, but that it was just a surreal moment. So there's another example. Many times I think people, and this is what I've learned, people often celebrate their loved ones or remember them on their heavenly birthday uh, and also remember them on their death anniversary. I feel the contact between my mother and myself is very strong or very high on the day that she died. So I honor her on her birthday, but I really feel a stronger connection on the day that she died, on the day that she passed away. So the day that she passed away, the day that she died each year, my mother sends me a gift. <laughs> she sends me some type of gift and the first time it happened, I was like, wow, that's kind of coincidental. Then the second time it happened, I'm like, oh my God, this cannot be a coincidence. The third time it happened, I was like, holy schmoly. This is not a fluke. This is not coincidence. This is real. And so about 12 years ago, the first two years of my daughter's life, I was struggling financially. I was trying to maintain and keep a job. I was a single mom before she was ever born. I was really trying to find my place. I had to move in with my parents for five months. It was just a struggle. It was, I had like four or five different jobs. It was just a real struggle. And I was really trying to find something to secure and keep and maintain to have steady employment and to be financially independent again and have my own place and just get back on my feet. And so on the day of her death, the anniversary of her death in 2009, I had started a new job and I had, it was a job that was an opportunity that was a blessing that came into my life and I kept that job for about five years and it created financial stability in my daughter's life and in my life and it got me back up on my feet and it created security for my daughter and I. So that's one example. Uh, my mother has also gone to bat for me on the day of her death about three or four years ago, a person who had created a lot of trauma and havoc in my life, that person was arrested on the day that she died, which was crazy to me when I found out because the person had moved far away and was not living here where I live anymore. And I found out via another person, oh yeah, so-and-so's in jail. And I'm like, huh? And it happened to fall on the day. Their arrest date was on the day of her death. <laughs> and this person had been very, very violent towards me. And I thought to myself, thank you, mom. And probably the latest and biggest gift and it's just not the day of her death. She shows up in my life throughout the year in various ways, but probably the biggest gift was where I live now. And there's many reasons as to why where I live now, uh, and it has a lot to do with her. That was one of the biggest gifts because I actually moved in where I live now on the day of her death. It all synced itself on the day that she died. It's quite amazing. So don't ever think that you're 
loved one is far away from you. If you establish contact, talk to them, put their picture out, put a candle next to them, put things that they once loved, items or belongings next to their picture, speak to them every day, talk out loud to them, share your concerns, share your worries, or just share good news because they're always around and they will send you signs. You will see signs. And I know with social media and, and, and things that we see online, you know, typical signs of a loved one that are near, you know, finding dimes, finding pennies, finding feathers, hearing a song, uh, smelling a smell out of the blue. Yeah, those are some typical things that may happen. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they will because they're specific to you. Those are general signs that could happen to anybody. But you will know when specific signs from your loved ones will be just for you. They won't be for anybody else. And you'll know what they are. For you, it could be um, a certain animal, it could be a bird, it could be a butterfly, it could be a certain song that comes on the radio. There was always this certain song that would come on the radio that would remind me of her for a very long time. And it would always be at a certain part in the song and I would turn the radio on and it would, it would come on to that certain part of the song. And I haven't heard that song in a while, but when it does come on, at that certain part of the song, I know that it's her. And I often see my mother in people. Over the years, I will be at a grocery store, the post office, I'll be out somewhere, and I will see a woman who reminds me of my mom if she were uh, 45 years older to what she would be now. And, I'm, and I look at the person and I think to myself, my God, that kind of looks like my mom if my mom were that age now. And I see her in other people. So she doesn't necessarily come through to me in my dreams, but I see her walking around in the physical world through other people. And there have been moments where I want to walk up to the person in the frozen section of the supermarket when they're standing there picking out their key lime pie, you know, choices. And I want to be like, excuse me, <laughs> but you know, but I never do. And so there's various ways that your loved ones will show up. And so your connection is very palpable. You can feel it. And don't ever second guess it because it's personal to you. It's personal to you. And so if you ever go to a medium or if you have mediumship capabilities and you ask about your loved one, sometimes your loved one may not step forward because they don't want to communicate through that person or they're not willing to step forward because you, it's not like turning on a light switch and then suddenly you can speak to uncle, you know, uncle Bob. I mean, it doesn't happen like that, like automatic. And so it'll come and go. But when it comes, when it's happening, be very aware of it and write it down and remember it because it can, it can pass you by. I could have looked at that message uh, last week and been like, oh, well, isn't that weird? Or just like dismissed it. But I didn't. It took the wind out of me. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you do not see that name at all. And you'll know, especially if you have a loved one who, is a, who has a rare name, there's no way. You can't dismiss that. And so my connection with her, I believe, has given me the abilities to, to do the things that I do. I credit it all to my connection 
with my mother on the other side. All my capabilities, I really feel, have been strengthened and have been formulated through my connection with her. I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact because there's been too many moments for me over the years, and you will know this as well, of these things cannot be explained, but they can be accepted. And it's just a testimony to me that heaven is real. And I'm not Christian, but I believe in heaven. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. And I know that it exists. And I don't feel that the veil between this world and the spirit world is ever shut completely. There's always an opening. And it's just not when the veil is thinnest at Halloween or Samhain or Day of the Dead. I feel that the veil is available and is open all the time. So I wanted to speak about that today. That happened. And <laughs> leave your uh, comments below if you've ever experienced anything like this yourself with family members, friends, loved ones who've passed over. What your thoughts are and comment below. But I wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, so One Bad Tarot Reader Podcast 16 Thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Stay blessed. And I'll speak to you soon.